Okay, so continuing on with step sequence, so let's look at these menus now. Um, and there's also a shortcut menu on the row header. Uh, let me make a, on this piano track, let me make an empty region. Okay, there it is. Now, if I don't load a template before I begin sequencing for a pitched instrument, I get the standard one octave major scale in C, C2 to C3. Let's um, put some steps in. And I'll give them a few slightly different values, like velocity, say. Not just on on steps, but on some of the off steps as well. Right. Um, and I'll also for this row, I'm going to change its settings to be different from the whole pattern. I'm going to make give it this row a step value of eighths and a different direction. Okay, there we go. Now first of all, look, this shortcut menu, when you right click or control click on the row header, most of this stuff is duplicated in the bottom half of this edit menu. So most of the time um, you're going to just right click or control click here. So the first thing we do is copy row. That copies everything for the row. The settings for the row and the steps. Then we go to another row. If we paste row, we paste everything. All the steps and the settings. Command Z to undo. If we paste steps, we're just pasting the steps but not the settings from the copied row. Command Z to undo. And if we paste row settings, we're pasting the settings from the copied row but not the steps. That's easy to remember. This one, duplicate row, <laughs> is, is actually this duplicate row with next assignment, right? But they just apparently didn't have enough room in this pop-up menu to put the full title of the command. But this is duplicate row with next assignment. Now for this you don't need to copy the row, you just select the row, there's its settings, because we're not copying, because we're not copying the steps here. We just do duplicate row with next assignment and it will duplicate the settings for the selected row to a new row with the next assignment and the next assignment is the next note or drum. In this case, C-sharp 3. So duplicate row with next assignment, boom. A new row is cre created with the next assignment, C-sharp 3, with the settings duplicated from this row. Command Z to undo. A clear row clears the whole row. Everything clears all steps and settings if different from the default. Clear row, boom, all gone. Right. Delete row actually deletes the row. It's completely gone. Command Z to undo. So everything here is in this bit of the edit menu, except for paste to new row. And let me just um, Command Z to undo and put those steps back in. Okay, so we're back where we were. This row has some steps in and it's set to a different settings for the step value and direction from the pattern. I copy the row. Now this paste to new row is, is not correctly titled really. It should be paste to new row with next assignment because that's what it is. This one duplicate row with next assignment, you just select the row and duplicate it, its settings to a new row with the next assignment. It doesn't copy the steps, it doesn't duplicate the steps, just it makes a new row with these settings with the next assignment, the next note, the next drum. But if you copy, you can do paste to new row with next assignment, and that pastes everything into a new row with the next assignment, the steps and the settings. Yeah, Command Z to undo. So that's all this which is nearly all replicated here, apart from that paste to new row, which actually should be paste to new row with next assignment. And always remember, duplicate row with next assignment, that's actually this, duplicate row with next assignment, right? Now, otherwise, in this edit menu, all this stuff is, you know, not this stuff, this is specific to step sequencer. But these are all just general commands. You know, this is all your undo stuff, this is cop, uh, cut, copy, paste and delete, standard commands, and repeat step. Now this is, uh, it's in here, but it's um, it's that standard command we used to in Logic. 
They are a standard key command, which is Command R. You know the one like you select a region, Command R. It, Command R. It repeats it. Yeah. Command Z to undo. Or you pencil in a MIDI region, say, put in some MIDI notes. You've got a region with some MIDI notes. Select them. Command R. It repeats them. It's it's that standard command we're used to. So with a step, you select the step, and to do it. You know, without changing the step, you use Alt, Alt, and select that step. That's now the selected step, payload in white. And I do repeat step, but it's just Command R. So you select the step and Command R, Command R, Command R, and you're repeating it on each subsequent step, right? Uh, command set to undo, undo, undo. Right, so that's all the stuff here apart from randomize and clear. Right, clear row clears the row, delete row removes the row completely. Now let's randomize and clear. You're going to randomize or clear the selected value here, either step on or these other values. Now randomize the selected value, it doesn't matter if that value exists on a step because you're just randomizing. So you choose the value, gate, and you can randomize gate for the row. Or choose chance, and you can randomize chance for the row. But the clear, the selected value, is only not grayed out if the selected value exists on at least one step in the row at a different value from default. So I'm on chance as the value. Clear chance is grayed out until I make one step a different value than default. Now I can clear the selected value chance. Boom. From every step. Velocity. There is velocity on steps. I can clear velocity. Gate. I can't clear gate because there isn't a step with a different gate than default. Make that so. There's a, a step with a different value of gate, the selected value, not the default. Now I can clear gate for all steps in the row. So randomize, randomize the selected value, clear whatever the value is, only is not grayed out if that selected value exists on one step at least in the row. And that's what those are, randomize and clear. Ronnie, right. Now the function menu here, for some reason learn mode is at the top. Well, why? <laughs> I mean, you know, it's here. This is where we add, as I've already shown you in the first video, we add a new note row or a new automation row. Or we add a learned row. This is sort of, it's, it's um, intuitively there because you're adding a learned row. But it's, it's here as well for some reason. Anyway, transpose, well, these are really easy. You don't need to come here to do this because the key commands are so easy to remember. It's just the Alt key, but some people call it the Option key. And arrow up, down to transpose up or down semitones. And Shift and the Option, or some people call it the Alt key. And arrow up, down to transpose up and down octaves. Well, these are really easy. You won't need to come in for that. You can remember them easily. Clear step. Well, look, I mean, Alt, select that step without changing it. That's no halo in white. That's a selected step. You can do clear step with this command. But actually, if you select a step and just backspace, it clears it of everything. Yeah, step on off and any other values. Right? So you're not really going to have to use um, alt. You're not really going to have to use clear step because you just select a step and backspace. Clear row, well, we've, we've already done that. It's here in this menu. It clears the whole row of any steps and any settings different to the pattern default, but leaves the row intact otherwise. Now these two, clear row values and clear all row values, again, are dependent on, like this one, for the selected row, clear the values for that row. Any active value in the row that is, any of these values on any one step or more that is set to anything other than default will be able to be cleared from the row. So here you clear from the row any active value. And here you clear from all rows any active value. 
This clears the entire pattern. Vroom. All steps are cleared. Right? And then finally, randomize. You don't need to have values in for this. You can randomize any value on the selected row or randomize any value on all rows. Uh, and then finally, this store as default pattern template. Well, you can set up a template and store it as the default pattern template, or you could load a pattern template and then set that as your default pattern template. If you've done that, you can then recall it, revert to the default pattern template. But um, as I haven't stored one, I can't re revert to it. So that's all that anyway. All right, and that's... Um, this menu, oh, I don't need to show you the transpose, right? Come on, it's so easy. Yeah, the alter option key, arrow up down to go up or down a semitone. If you put any notes in, it transposes it up or down a semitone, and with shift up or down by the octave. Look at that, leaves the view menu. Now you've got zoom focus row. Well, this is the same as zoom focus track. Zoom focus row, it zooms the focus yeah. row. Yeah, so select a row, yeah. it zooms. But this next one, why is it even here? Set edit mode 2 to choose the edit mode here. Well, why would I come here to do it when it, I just go here and choose it? I choose my value here. Why on earth am I going to go here? View, select, gate. That's a click. Select. Browse and click versus select and click. I mean, it's just absolutely nuts, but it's there anyway. It's, this is the same as selecting the, the value here that you're editing. And again, these two, uh, open the pattern browser, open the local inspector. Why on earth would I come here to do it? When I can open my pattern browser like that or open my inspector like that. So the only thing I can assume is that these are in here to give them a key command. But for God's sake, would you bother with a key command? Like with all the other things you've got to learn in Logic, are you going to bother to learn these key commands to open the browser? The pattern browser or the local inspector when you can just go, open me pattern browser, duh, open me inspector. No, but they're there. Uh, display edit mode values is always for selected rows by default, and it means I select a row and I see for the value, in this case velocity, I see every step displays the value for the step. And if I start to edit a step for the value, the number reflects the tweaking I'm doing. I'll left click to reset. That's the default. You can set it only when editing, if you like, in which case you choose a value like velocity. And as soon as you tweak, then you see the values for all steps, including the one you're tweaking. I'll left click to reset. Or you can have it in always for all rows. But then, you know, like you choose a value like velocity and Every single step shows the velocity value for it, for each step, and it's a bit cluttered, so I tend to just leave it on that, the default, right? Alrighty, and then show row colours. Well, that's just opening the colour box. Um, option or Alt key C. And you can colour a row differently. Right? Mm. Put it back to whatever the default was. Something like that, isn't it? Looks about right. Um, yeah. Yeah, right. If you want to, you finally can set the step color by the region. Now, the step color is the same as the region. That mustardy yellow, like for drummer regions, you know. All right. That's it. That's all your menus. In truth, you're hardly going to use any of them. I mean, these transpose ones are so easy to learn, you're not going to bother with those. You just, these are so, I think, you know, such easy to learn key commands. Yeah, you're going to clear row from time to time. You want to clear everything in a row, but you just do it here. Clear row. But the only thing you're going to do quite commonly is to copy a row, which is copies everything. Like maybe you'll copy a hi-hat row and then go to a shaker row and paste in the steps to duplicate your hi-hat pattern to the shaker. To then either go on and further tweak the shaker pattern to complement the hi-hat pattern or to... Take the hi-hat pattern, paste it into the shaker, and then delete the hi-hat. So the shaker is doing the hi-hat pattern instead of the instead of instead of the hi-hat. I mean, you'll probably use those, but most of them you're not going to use, to be honest, right? But anyway, that's your menus, right? Um, shall 
So uh, let's move on now. And next, I'm going to step you through all of these values. It's a bit slightly longer video of this, but I'm going to because I'm going to show you all of these values, what they do, and examples of using them. Okay, so uh, let's look at that in the next video.